Chapter 35 Camelin Laughing in relief, Rant exclaimed, We made it, Matt! He stopped in silence as he took in the view of Camelin. He thought that Bailon and Shadar Lagoth had prepared him for sea in a city, but it was more than he'd imagined. It was easily fifty times bigger than Bailon, with fifty foot high walls with watchtowers flying in red and white banners. As they rolled toward the gate, Bunt told them that the city was Ogier built. The inner city, at least, which is where the palace is located. The boys felt overwhelmed, especially by the noise, and Matt had his hands over his ears. He asked Rand how would they hide here, who would they trust. Rand told him, Can't you see it, you wool-headed idiot? We're safe if you ever learn to watch your bloody tongue. Look at it, Matt. Anything could happen here. We might even find Moraine waiting for us, and all the others. Matt cynically told him that's if they're alive. They're most likely dead like the Gleeman. The cart finally made its way through the crowded gate, where guards called out for people to keep moving, don't push and not to block the entrance. The road became a boulevard with trees lining the middle, and Bun took the cart into a side alley to pull in out of the way. He shocked Rand by asking if his cloak concealed what Holdwin was talking about. Rand managed not to give his surprise away, and simply asked what he meant. Bunt told him that if he'd overheard he was going to Camelin, he must have heard the rest of the conversation. If he'd wanted the reward, he would have made an excuse to go back into the inn and told Holdwin, but he hates the innkeeper, and as such, he hates any of his friends. Bunt warned Rand to hide it, ignoring the protests of ignorance, and headed off into the city, leaving the boys. Matt asked what they should do now. How do they find the others if they're here? Rand insisted that Moraine will find them, and if not, they can think about going to Elida. For now, they're going to follow Tom's advice and go to the Queen's Blessing. Matt worked himself up into a despair at ever being safe again and with no one to trust. Rand grabbed him and pointed out that they got this far despite their doubts. So keep faith in the light and not lie down in surrender. They asked for directions to the inn, and while some people were helpful, others complained about country boys. They saw people of colours and dress of other nations, carriages and sedans. They were even white cloaks, which they made a point to avoid. Rand noticed that every man who wore a sword had it wrapped in either red or white cloth. He realised it would be a good way to disguise the heron mark on his sword's hilt. He purchased cloth off a street vendor, choosing the red as it was cheaper, and wrapped Tam's sword with it. They caught the hostility the locals had towards those who came to see Loghain, and Matt suggested going straight on to Tarvalon, but Rand insisted that they stay for now. Eventually, they reached the Queen's Blessing, and with a deep breath, they entered. It was a relief to find it clean and well lit, with cheerful maids who smiled greetings. Only a dozen patrons drank in the common room, but it was early in the day, and the smell of food almost made them swoon. The innkeeper was a grey-haired fat man with a pleasant smile, who introduced himself as Basil Gill. Rand began to tell him that Tom Merrilyn sent them, when Gill's smile dropped and he bustled them into the alleyway behind the kitchen. He asked what was in the case and Rand told him it was Tom's flute, opening it up to show Gill. The innkeeper told Rand that he recognised it. There's few like it outside of royal courts. He asked why they had it. Tom would rather lose an arm than his flute. Rand unfilled Tom's gleeman's cloak and revealed he had his harp as well. Sadly, Rand explained. Tom's dead, Master Gill. If he was your friend, I'm sorry. He was ours too. A man tried to kill us. Tom pushed this at me and told us to run. We'd have been killed if it hadn't been for him. We were on our way to Camelin together, so he told us to come here, to your inn. Surprisingly, Gil replied, I'll believe he's dead when I see his corpse. I believe you saw what you saw. I just don't believe he's dead. Old Tom Merrilyn's a harder man to kill than you might believe. Rand put his hand on Matt's shoulder and told him it's alright, he's a friend. With a sigh, Gil agreed, but was surprised that Tom was coming to Camelin. It's the last place he'd expect him to go other than Tarvalon. He then asked if they had any trouble with Aes Sedai, and although Matt said yes, Rand asked why he would think that. Gil chuckled and said he knows Tom would jump on the chance to help lads of their age if they had issues with Aes Sedai, then cautiously tried to ask what the trouble was. Rand realised he was trying to ask if either of them could channel, and quickly assured Gil that they couldn't. In fact, an Aes Sedai, Moraine, was helping them. He looked the boys over and presumed they couldn't pay, then offered them a room to share in the attic and food. Tom was his friend and would want them cared for. Rand thanked him, it was more than he'd expected. Gil suggested that they not mention Aes Sedai. There were too many in Camelin who would take it the wrong way, not to mention the White Cloaks. Matt snorted. For all I care, the Ravens could take every Aes Sedai straight to Shai Ghul. Gil snapped at him that he has no love for Aes Sedai, but he isn't a fool to think they caused all the trouble. 
The Regards will beat anyone they catch talking against them, and the White Cloaks will hassle those who speak in support with the dragon's fang on their door. He doesn't want either trouble brought into his inn. He warns them it is best that they don't mention Tom either. Some of the Queen's guards have long memories, as does the Queen. Incredulous, Rand asked if Tom had trouble with the Queen. Gil laughed and said, It's obvious he didn't tell you everything. Well, there's no harm in you knowing. Do you think every Gleeman has such a high opinion of themselves? He wasn't always a Gleeman. There was a time Tom Merrilyn was court barred, right here in Camelin, and known in every royal court from Tyr to Maradon. Matt was surprised, but Rand nodded to himself. He could easily picture Tom in court with his grand gestures and stately manner. Gil continued, It wasn't long after Tarangil Damadred died that the trouble with his nephew cropped up. There were some who said Tom was closer to the Queen than was proper, but Morgays was a young widow. Tom was in his prime and the Queen can do as she wishes as far as I'm concerned. Morgays has always had a temper, and when he took off without a word she was furious, as well as for meddling in Aes Sedai business. When he did come back they had some words. Words you don't say to a queen, or any woman with Morgase's spirit. Elida was set against him as well for trying to get involved in the business of his nephew, and between that pair's animosity, Tom left Camling a step ahead of the headsman's axe. As far as I know, the writ still stands. When Rand said it was such a long time ago, maybe no one remembers. Gil shook his head. Gareth Bryn is Captain General of the Queen's Guard and was in personal command of the guard sent after Tom. I doubt he'll forget having to return empty-handed to the Queen, and the Queen never forgets anything. You ever known a woman who did? The city walked soft and whispered for a month afterwards. Best you keep Tom a secret as well as your eyes to die. Come on, I'll get you something to eat. You look like your stomach's a gnawing at you. Thanks for listening. Please like, share and subscribe and help get a new channel off the ground. Thank you.